Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, Intersport, Seven Days. This is the last show of the season. The Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv saga told through its heroes. Father and son, a unique portrait of final 4B win MVP Tyrese Rice. The Euroleague first team, one by one. The 10 unforgettable plays of the 2013-2014 Turkish Airlines Euroleague. the 18th, just after 10pm. We had a tough season, we fought through injuries, fought through a lot of stuff, man, and just to win the EuroLeague, be the best team of the year, it, it, it makes everything so much sweeter, man. I'm just proud of everybody. Uh, all the guys worked so hard all season. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, bumps and bruises, uh, but we just kept fighting. Uh, we've, we've become a team that uh, starts to smell blood uh, you know, as the season progressed and we got better and better and learned how to put teams away. This joy finally arrived after a long, hard season. Let's go back to last October, just before the start of the regular season. We kept the, uh, most of the roster and uh, uh, we put a couple big names in our team, especially Sofo and uh, Tarist. We have built a stronger roster, a deeper roster, addressed specific needs in terms of uh, uh, skilled positions that, that, that we had to have, uh, I think, in order to take the next step. You know, basketball is a team sport, you know, it's not an individual sport, so you have to get used to, you know, working together with other people and uh, understanding that, you know, uh, everything you do, you know, affects everybody else around you. Here at Maccabi, we really emphasize on teamwork. winning their group with an 8-2 record, Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv had to face both Seska Moscow and Real Madrid in the top 16, and both played a crucial part in their destiny. We've been a team with, the, with our feet on the ground the whole season. One of our advantages has been the fact that we're humble and we're hungry, and uh, we recognize our limitations, and we know that as a unit, we have to draw more out of ourselves than the sum of the individual parts. After finishing third, the Yellows had to win in the playoffs in Milan to reach the final four. Game one did not look promising for a long period. Even if it's two minutes to go and we're down 12, um, I said to one, one, to David Blue on the bench, it's not over, it's not over and we can do it. And this, he told me, come on guy, be serious. Let's win the second game. And I said, wait. Unbelievable, man. We down seven points with a minute left. Fought. We just fought. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. We just fought to the end and got the win. We set not long-term goals. We set short-term goals. We went step by step. 
But I knew we had the right stuff when we beat Milano here, and that was something spectacular. You know, that's a sign from above. In Greek mythology, they would tell you it's a white dove or an olive branch. And, you know, I, I knew right then and there that something special was going to happen. When we came here in the first game against Milan, and we were able to show heart and uh, determination and uh, turn around the game, I, I really thought uh, this team can go all the way. This is what it's about. You need the determination and then the will to win, and this team for sure has it. Even with home advantage, Maccabi still needed two more wins, which is when a certain someone stepped up their game. David Blue is the most uh, experienced guy in, uh, in this team. He, he was in, like I think, four Final Four already. And uh, experience you, 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 you can't buy nowhere. So he got it. to the magic city of Milan for the final four, looking for another miracle. The first big mountain to climb was once again Seska. And like in their first trip to Milan, a great comeback was needed. This time, 15 points. Final play, a point down, the winning decision from the coach. No foul, but go for the steal to win. Thankfully and, and uh, honorably, a lot of people throughout the world watch that game. I believe 201, 202, or 203 countries. My two daughters now are in Mexico, and they went to a bar, and they saw the game live, and they were going crazy. And they wrote me all these nice messages. And then after the game, they wrote me, after the Real Barcelona game, they wrote me and they said, Dad, sorry that we watched that game. <laughs> My daughters are honest, they, they were taught well. The time to celebrate is very short. History is beckoning. In the second half, man, I, I thought that the game was turning a little bit in the third quarter especially. And then in the fourth quarter, uh, we just made some unbelievable plays. And, uh, you know, we, we showed our character. And missing that last shot, man, I was really 
kind of mad and disappointed in myself because I'm like, this is, like, this is, this is, you're supposed to make these shots. These are practice shots. No matter the moment, these are shots you have to make. We just told everybody settle down. You know, we were, we were, we were right where we wanted to be. You know, we have five minutes left and uh, we, that we were going to win the game. I think you play better in pressure. I mean, in big games and big moments and stuff like that, I feel like uh, players that want to be, you know, called great or be called really, really good, they have to step up in these moments. a pair of inspirational performances to lift Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv to a memorable Turkish Airlines EuroLeague title and earn himself the final 4B Win MVP award, Tyrese Rice was able to enjoy his on-court celebrations with someone very special, his eight-year-old son, Ashawn. Rice is raising Ashawn as a single father and it was no surprise to see them savouring the moment of glory together in Milan's Mediolanum Forum because they spend much of their time side by side. He's everywhere with me. I mean, if I'm in the gym, he's in the gym. You know, if I'm in the weight room, he's in the weight room trying to do something. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just funny to see him, you know, try to do everything that I do. Although Tyrese is more than happy to take on the responsibility of bringing up a Sean, his schedule as a professional sportsman means he can't do it on his own, and he has been grateful to receive a lot of support to negotiate the day-to-day -day practical challenges of fatherhood. It's not really uh, possible for me to do this without the help of, you know, other people. You know, being able to um, have people just help me out when I need them, maybe we have a practice one day when he's getting out of school or something, having somebody be able to go to pick him up. So, I mean, the help of other people is what really makes it possible. Before joining Maccabi last summer, Tyrese also played in Greece, Lithuania and Germany. And over the years, he has been moved by the generosity of all his teams in making sure that Ashawn has always been well looked after. It means a lot to have uh, these teams, you know, basically put their, uh, put their hand forward to help me. The first thing that these teams do is ask me about my son. They ask me what I need. They ask me about schools. They basically try to make sure that he's taken care of before me, and that's how I know that that they're really uh, genuinely inter interested in, in my well-being and me as a player. Tyrese is also grateful for the life experiences that basketball has provided for him and his son. And he believes that Sean will derive a great deal of long-term benefit from the wide range of cultures he's been exposed to in the first few years of his life. He's seeing things that I've never seen before, you know, at a young age. It's my first time seeing it, and. This is his first time seeing it, so it's a great experience for him. He's learning languages. He's, you know, he's getting to meet kids from all over the world. And I mean, it's just a, it's a great opportunity for him that he'll appreciate later on in life. Although Tyrese's status as a professional basketball player has now been propelled into a new level thanks to his brilliant title-winning performance in the Final Four, 
Whatever lies ahead, he has already made one firm decision. His son will continue to be his main priority. Growing up for me, I mean, I didn't really have a, a real father figure, you know, around and stuff. And I felt like having a son, I mean, it's very important for him to have his father in his life. No matter what I was doing, he had to be there, basically. So it was just uh, something that I felt like I had to do, something that I wanted to do, and I thought it was needed. The 2013-2014 Turkish Airlines Euroleague first team has been selected with tens of thousands of votes from fans around the globe. Let's get to know the five best players of the season a little better. Although he did not start a single game, Sergio Rodriguez had as much of an impact as any player on Real Madrid leading the Euroleague in victories and scoring more points than any team this century. And Chacho was also named the B-Win MVP of the season. I'm very, very happy to have this, this award. It's an honor for me with all the incredible league, incredible players that are playing in EuroLeague. And happy, happy, and I want to say thank you to my coaches, my teammates that helped me during the years to, to be in this position I am right now. Alfonso Ford top scorer trophy winner Keith Langford led EA7 Emporia Mani Milan to the brink of the final four. He scored in the 20s nine times and in double figures in every top 16 and playoffs game in which he played. Leading the Euroleague in scoring in both of those phases, averaging more points than any other Euroleague player over the past five seasons. Is that, you know, and that's, uh, that's really one of the keys in, uh, in this game is consistency. So uh, I really feel like uh, showing that I was a consistent performer night in, night out with the format uh, elongated, uh, you know, it, it, it got the attention of people and it's, it's why I'm here at this ceremony now. Rudy Fernandez helped Real Madrid's record-breaking attack with acrobatic baskets, rim-rocking alley-oop slams, strong outside shooting and stellar defence. This is the second straight all Euroleague first team selection for Rudy, who was also the Rising Star Trophy winner in 2007. Ah, it's, it's fun to play in Real Madrid because we run, we, we execute uh, with a lot of spectacular uh, baskets and I think it's, it's fun to play with the fans. Sunny Weems confirmed his status as one of the best clutch scorers in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. He finished as Seska's top scorer and the go-to guy with games on the line. In his third Euroleague season, this is the first all-Euroleague selection for him. Whether it's scoring, passing or, or rebounding, uh, doing whatever it takes, you know, to, to put my team in a position to win. Um, that, that's my goal and that's my role on this team. This is my second Final Four in the past three years, so did pretty good for an American over here. So. Big man Ante Tomic was the centerpiece of FC Barcelona's attack. He became the first player to earn the monthly B-Win MVP honour twice in one season, when he did so back-to-back -back in February and March. For Tomic, this is a second straight all Euroleague first team honour. It was a product of, of team play because if we didn't win all those games, I, I couldn't have made it. And now the top 10 plays of the season. Number 10, Crete, Greece, regular season round four. Dimitris Diamantidis of Panathinaikos sinks an off-balance shot, but Kronoslav Simon of Lokomotiv Kuban runs the floor and stuns the crowd with a game-winning three-pointer on the buzzer. <laughs> Number
number nine, Munich, Germany. Top 16, round five. Robin Benting looks to score for FC Bayern, but Karl Heinz assumes the role of Man Mountain to deny him. A huge block in a huge road win for Seska. Number eight, Bielsk, Greece. Top 16, round 14. Final seconds of the final game of the top 16 between Olympiakos Pireos and Panathinaikos Athens. Game tied and Vasilis Banoulis sinks a buzzer-beating game-winning triple from way downtown to settle one of the most intense local rivalries in the world of professional sport. Number 7, Krasnodar, Russia. Top 16, round 10. Here comes the unstoppable Derek Brown. He takes the pass from Marcus Williams and only has one thing in mind. Going straight through and over Furkan Aldemir to explode a hang-time dunk. Number 6, Florence, Italy. Regular season, round 10. Game tied, 3.9 seconds left. Jason Granger races down court, blows past the defender and banks in an off-balance one-handed shot at the buzzer to send Unica Hamalaga to the top 16. Number 5, Milan, Italy. Playoffs, game one. Overtime between EA7 and Maccabi and the visitors explode as Tyrese Rice floats up the pass and Alex Tyus makes an incredible leap to force down a stunning one-handed alley-oop. Number four, Tel Aviv, Israel. Top 16, round 12. In the dying seconds of the third quarter, Dante Draper misses for Real Madrid and the ball drops to Devin Smith who promptly sinks a simply amazing full-court buzzer-beating triple. Number three, Piraeus, Greece, playoffs game three. Inbound pass from Kostas Sloukas for Olympiakos and Matt Lojewski simply explodes to the basket, rising over Salah Mejri of Real Madrid and throwing down a brutal dunk. Number two, Madrid, Spain, top 16, round seven. Last minute and a huge victory for Real Madrid. Showtime, Salah Mejri with the block, the dribble, the pass. Alberto Martin finds Sergio Rodriguez who floats it up and Mejri finishes the alley-oop. Number one, Istanbul, Turkey, top 16, round four. Anadolu FS Istanbul down by two. Keith Langford of EA7 Milan misses a free throw. Zoran Vaninic rebounds, turns and fires the length of the court. Boom, it goes off the backboard and in. An incredible buzzer beaten for Planinic's 100th EuroLeague three-pointer to give FS its first top 16 victory in unforgettable fashion. It has been a thrilling and passionate season, and we leave you with a few laughs from the stars. I don't know why. Is it good? <laughs> Devotion Sophia Sophia How are you doing Miss Sophia Mr. Chip <laughs> 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 Ouais, ils disent deux fois devotion et après un fil devotion. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, what? Wait. 1877. <laughs> I think it was 51. Was it 51? 73. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm Ricky Minard from Budaville, Nakia. I'm Dewan Summers from 
full of energy. Nah, nah. <laughs> Cut that out. Six hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Two. Four fifty. Five fifty. Four seventy-five. Four fifty. Eighteen million. <laughs> Thirty-two. Twenty-three. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> devotion, devotion. I feel devotion. Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, Intersport, Seven Days.